At some point in your life, you've probably had a cold, suffered a scrape or a cut, or had a vaccination. All of these things trigger immune responses in the body. What exactly are immune responses? What parts of the body initiate and regulate immune responses? What's the immune system? And what are some of the immune system problems? During the next few minutes, we're going to explore these questions and others as we investigate the fascinating characteristics of the immune system. As you go through your day, you're continually exposed to harmful organisms and substances even though you don't realize it. This doorknob and this computer keyboard, for example, may harbor harmful bacteria or viruses that if allowed to enter your body could make you sick. But fortunately, the body's defense mechanisms, our immune system, can fight off most attacks. One of the main jobs of the immune system is to fight infectious diseases an infectious disease is an illness caused by organisms or viruses that enter and reproduce inside the body. Pneumonia, influenza, and the common cold are examples of infectious diseases. Viruses, bacteria, and other organisms that cause infectious diseases are called pathogens. There are thousands of different pathogens responsible for causing a wide range of illnesses. Bacteria, protists, viruses, fungi, and even certain types of worms can be pathogens. The way you catch a disease, or the way it spreads, is called transmission. There are several ways pathogens can be transmitted. You observe. How is the cold pathogen from this person being transmitted to the other person? As you can see, it's most likely transmitted by direct contact from the infected person's hand. Direct contact is a common way that infectious diseases are transmitted. Many contagious diseases that spread from one person to another can also be spread by indirect contact. Rhinoviruses that cause dozens of different kinds of colds can be indirectly transmitted through the air or by objects that have been touched by an infected person. Other diseases can be transmitted by contaminated water or food. For example, in some parts of the world, poorly designed sanitation systems and untreated sewage contaminate water supplies with harmful organisms that can cause dysentery. This is the leading cause of death in many countries. Foods contaminated by bacteria such as Salmonella and E. coli can cause vomiting, fever, and even death in some cases. Animals, often in the form of insects, can also transmit infectious diseases. For example, the pathogen that causes malaria is spread by the bite of infected mosquitoes. Malaria, characterized by fever, chills, headache, muscle aches and tiredness kills an estimated one million people a year throughout the world. At some point you've scraped, cut, or punctured your skin. Most of these injuries heal, but sometimes pathogens infect these injuries, inhibiting the healing process. You decide what structure surrounding the body protects it from harmful invaders. The skin, the largest organ in the body, forms a protective barrier that's impenetrable to many, but not all, pathogens. The skin, as well as sweat, tears, saliva, mucus, and membranes lining body passages help stop pathogens from entering the body. These are collectively referred to as first-line defenses. 
Pathogens sometimes get past the first line of defense and start an infection. If this occurs, the second line of defense is activated in what is called an inflammatory response. When body tissue becomes damaged, cells release histamines and other chemical compounds. Histamines cause blood capillaries to increase blood flow and leak plasma into intercellular fluid. This causes the area to become red and swollen. Plasma that leaks into the infected area also contains platelets that help clot blood. At the same time, white blood cells called phagocytes engulf pathogens like bacteria and other unwanted materials. Pathogens can cause infected cells to produce a protein called interferon. This substance causes nearby uninfected cells to produce enzymes that block the reproduction of pathogens. The human immune system is made up of a variety of cells, organs, and organ systems. At the cellular level, different types of white blood cells, also called leukocytes, play a key role in fighting pathogens. Phagocytes are leukocytes that engulf unwanted cells and pathogens in a nonspecific manner. Macrophages are the largest leukocytes and lymphocytes are leukocytes involved in specific defense activities. The circulatory system and the lymphatic system transport white blood cells throughout the body. The lymphatic system also produces and stores white blood cells and a fluid called lymph. Lymph is transported through lymph vessels. Special structures called lymph nodes filter lymph and store white blood cells. When the body is fighting an infection, white blood cells are produced in great numbers. Lymph nodes, such as those in the neck, often become sore and swollen. You may have noticed this when you were sick. Important structures in the lymphatic system include the tonsils, thymus gland, and the spleen. The spleen is very important because it removes worn out red blood cells, platelets, bacteria, and other things from the blood. Chances are you haven't had diseases such as smallpox, mumps, rubella, polio, or measles. This is because, at a young age, you most likely received vaccines to help your body create immunities against these diseases. You decide. What is immunity? Immunity is the ability of the body to fight infection through the production of antibodies and cells that inactivate foreign invaders. These specific defenses are collectively referred to as an immune response. An immune response is caused by the immune system's reaction to antigens. An antigen is a substance on the surface of a cell that identifies the cell as a pathogen. In other words, something that is harmful to the body. The immune system's role is to identify foreign invaders, such as bacteria and viruses, and ultimately destroy them. As you recall, macrophages fight general infections, while lymphocytes recognize and fight specific infection. There are two types of lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, also known as B cells, and T lymphocytes, also referred to as T cells. B cells are produced in the bone marrow and eventually circulate in the circulatory and lymphatic systems. The main function of B cells is to recognize specific antigens and produce specific antibodies. Antibodies do not destroy antigens, instead they mark them for T cell destruction by binding to them. Like B cells, T cells are also produced in the bone marrow 
but they mature in the thymus, hence the name T-cell. T-cells are lymphocytes that seek and destroy pathogens. There are several types of T-cells. For example, cytotoxic T-cells, also called killer T-cells, attack dangerous cells by producing a protein that bursts the cell membrane. As you know, immunity is the ability of the body to fight infection in different ways. There are two main types of immunity. Active immunity, also referred to as acquired immunity, and passive immunity. Up to now, we've discussed how the body produces antibodies and T cells to attack particular antigens. As a result of fighting a particular pathogen, Memory cells remaining in the body quickly produce antibodies or killer T cells if the pathogen enters again. This is referred to as active immunity. If you've had the chicken pox, you've developed an active immunity against the virus so that there's only a slim chance you can get the disease a second time. This is because antibodies and T cells respond quickly to the pathogen to defeat it when it enters the body again. Active immunity can also occur through the use of vaccines. You've probably had vaccines to develop immunity against diseases such as polio, measles, and mumps. A vaccine consists of dead or weakened viruses or bacteria or altered bacterial poisons that are placed in the body, most commonly orally or via injections. The introduced weakened antigen prompts an immune response producing antibodies or killer T cells. In this way, a person develops immunity to a disease without suffering through the symptoms of the disease. Vaccines have undoubtedly saved the lives of millions of people and have greatly improved the quality of human life. Passive immunity, in contrast to active immunity, is only temporary lasting just days to months. A type of passive immunity, called maternal immunity, occurs when infants acquire antibodies from the mother before birth. These antibodies, also passed on through the mother's milk, help protect the newborn from disease during early stages of development. If you suffer from hay fever, if you sneeze or get watery eyes in dusty places, or if you have similar reactions around dogs or cats, you are well familiar with allergies. An allergy is the reaction of the immune system to a relatively harmless substance, as if it were an antigen. In an allergic reaction, antibodies stimulate macrophages to release histamines. Histamines cause the eyes to produce tears, blood vessels to expand, and nasal passages to secrete mucus. People who suffer from allergies are often prescribed an antihistamine medication to reduce these symptoms. Common causes of allergies include flower pollen, mold spores, dust, and even some foods. Severe allergic reactions to things like bee stings can be extremely dangerous to some people. When the immune system mistakes the body's cells for pathogens, an autoimmune disease is caused. Multiple sclerosis is an example of an autoimmune disease in which T cells and antibodies attack the coverings of nerve cells, creating problems with nerve functioning. AIDS is another example of an autoimmune disease. AIDS, or Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is the fastest growing epidemic in the world, affecting millions of people. AIDS is caused by the human immune deficiency virus, referred to as HIV. While a cure for AIDS has not yet been found, new drug therapies have been developed to help alleviate symptoms and prolong life. Generally speaking, in order for the immune system to remain healthy, it's essential to practice certain behaviors. 
It's recommended that you eat a well-balanced diet, get plenty of rest and exercise, practice good hygiene, avoid tobacco, drugs and alcohol, and get vaccinations to prevent diseases. These practices will greatly increase the odds of helping you live a long, active, healthy life. During the past few minutes, we've explored many of the fascinating characteristics of the immune system. We began by looking at some of the ways pathogens are transmitted and cause disease. The body's first line of defense against pathogens was explored, as was the second line of defense, the inflammatory response. The main cells and structures that make up the immune system were highlighted. Next, the general processes involved in the immune response were described, and the various types of immunity were briefly explained. Last, we explored some of the problems that the immune system may encounter, rounding out our investigation of the fascinating immune system. Fill in the blank with the correct word. Number one, viruses and bacteria that cause disease are called Number two, the process of transferring pathogens from person to person is called disease. Number three, one of the most important first lines of defense against disease is the Number four, this infected cut has activated an response. Number five, at the cellular level, blood cells are key in fighting foreign invaders. Number six, the system produces and stores leukocytes and lymph. Number seven, is the ability of the body to fight infection via antibodies or specialized cells. Number eight, are white blood cells that recognize specific antigens and ultimately destroy them. Number nine, AIDS is a disease affecting the immune system caused by a virus referred to as And number 10, this is a that will help this person develop immunity to a specific disease. <laughs>